It's the Center Fantasy Football Podcast. Welcome to the party, pal. Yes! Yes! Yes, this is my favorite part of the game. Analyzing all of the league matchups week to week. You can't win! Get him a body bag! Finish him! That is a bit above average. I said this sucks, and basically so do you. And discussing the boom, bust, and hidden gem players throughout the league. We ain't found shit! What the hell is Brett Favre doing here? I'm in town to play the Dolphins, you dumbass. Dan Marino should die of gonorrhea and rot in hell. Lace is out. Touchdown! <laughs> and here's your host... Allow myself to introduce... Myself. David Harbatkin. Hello and welcome to the Center Fantasy Football Podcast for week four, season 10. I'm your host, David Harbatkin, joined by uh, my last week's opponent, Mr. Gay Zalutsky. What's up, people? Um, Manny at a wedding this week, so he is not going to join us in the main part of the program, but he did pre-record a, a segment with me earlier today. Uh, which we will bring to you during the break. Um, but in the meantime, um, let's get started with uh, last week's games. Um, where shall we begin? Where indeed? Let's see. Mm, week four. Yeah, I um, really find where this stuff is. <laughs> I'm thoroughly unprepared for... Uh, this podcast, as usual. Um, there it is. Okay. There you go. All right. So oh, now that gets it. No, that's already showing this horrid week. Let's not never look at that again. Okay. Um, <laughs> where would you like to begin? You want to just begin with our game because nobody cares about our game. Nobody cared about this game. Um, well, I, mean, I did, but you know, nobody cares about it now. Um, Yeah, I mean, it was a close game. I mean, basically, you had everybody go. Maybe. I hate it. One o'clock. It sucks. Yeah. I mean, and you felt pretty confident. I mean, you, you, you felt decently confident. I mean, well, one of the, you know, the, 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 the kneel down in that Buffalo Baltimore game really hurt you uh, at the end. Mm hmm. I mean, you had so first of all, you had Baltimore going for it on fourth and I don't and fourth and goal, and then rather than just kicking the field goal to take the lead, which caused Buffalo to drive down the field, and then all they needed was a field goal, mm -hmm. and so they just kneeled it at the end, and then kicked the three, and like and that took a ton of points away, you know, the potential points it could have been to a lot of because first of all, you had a um, uh, Josh Allen, but then you know it could have gone to Singletary. You know, there's a bunch of points that were taken away. Yeah, Singletary actually slowed down at the five yard line. Yeah, exactly. Um, I did also suffer from having uh, McKenzie knocked out of that game, so that did help. That could have helped you there. Um, but yeah, 125 was pretty, pretty decent. And then throughout the afternoon, you were watching the game and um. You kept saying, I think 75 was your target to feel comfortable going into the Monday night um, with Cooper Cup and um, Jeff Wilson going. And it, and it, and it stayed, it, it hovered right around. So we got we got close to that pretty quickly, I think. And then it kind of hovered there for like, because like there were drives in that um, Carolina game and um what was the other game that and, and and the Raiders game also? Uh, was there another game that was going on at that time? I think the New England game also. Uh, <laughs> which, by the way, the New England uh, turnover. So prior to the game starting, Manny said, "You should you you should you should start the Denver defense." Or he's like, or he said, what he actually said was, "If I if I was you, I would start the Denver defense." I'm like, "Well, I'm not you." And I started the New England defense, and thankfully, they got me the ten points that I needed, which matched your defense, um, which was necessary as well because I got the pick six. Um, but um, 
Yeah, it just kind of hovered there around 70. And then Ryan, and then there was like, and then it just broke towards the end of that, the, the fourth quarter in a lot of those games. So McCaffrey scored a touchdown. Russell Wilson ran for a touchdown. And then we kind of got to about 94, 95, I, I think, on Sunday night. And then, and then Monday, it was, it was over pretty quickly. I, I got a notification that Jeff Wilson scored the touchdown. I wasn't even home at that point. And, you know, at that point, I kind of, you, you never know until it's like, First of all, until it's over, or, or at the very least, until you have surpassed the uh, the other team's score. But it, it seemed pretty clear that you know we were going to win, and we ultimately did one thirty five point five eight to one twenty four point three two. I, I, you know, um, I mean, Patterson got injured in the game that hurt. I mean, there was you know there was you know it was it was it was a close game, but. Um, you know, I, I certainly need it more than you did, but uh, it was a good game. Saved your ass. Well, uh, any game where Andrews gets 3.5 points, we're looking good. And then Russell Wilson saved the day. I know. Well, for once and probably for the only time this season, but yes. I mean, McCaffrey wasn't even looking that good. I was just, I was watching that game and Baker was just so horrid that they just, and thankfully bailed it out with a touchdown at the end. But yeah. Um, Garrett Wilson hurt you. Uh, Last minute, I couldn't. I, I mashed the trigger. It was already one o'clock. <laughs> Who were you gonna put in there? Who knows? Anybody? <laughs> was well, in Hilaire, but I'm not gonna make that mistake again. Hilaire is starting for the rest of the season. There you go. Um. But otherwise, yeah, nothing. No other real takeaways from this game. At least I don't have any. Uh, do you? No, I mean, Keenan Allen's a bitch. <laughs> Milking his hamstring injury for a month now. Can we, like, for years make fun of Keenan Allen, how he was always injured, and finally this year, you're like, he's oh, yeah. pretty good, I'm going to go get him, and then he does the injury shenanigans again. What a bitch. Fuck Keenan Allen. Fuck you, Russell Wilson. <sighs> well, I, I, I concur on that one. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, let's move on to the next game. Um, well, get this this garbage fest out of the, the way. Pakistan's <laughs> finest beat Wakanda 143.08 to 81.5. I mean, we always say that the Thursday night game doesn't really decide, you know, and, and in fact, it will oftentimes, whatever the result is on Thursday, it will be the opposite, not here. Um First of all, Tua goes down with only 2.4 points. That hurt him right there at the quarterback position. He actually uh, could have gotten even more. I think he was, like, deciding between to, whether or not to play golf or him. He almost played golf. I think I – I didn't even mean to talk him out of it, but I did apparently. Uh, so he would have gotten even more points there. Um, but, yeah, I mean – 24 for Burrow, uh, Davis only 2.3 in that. That was a really bad game that uh, Buffalo played for the most part. Uh, 15 for Thielen, who's starting to heat up, uh, as is Henry. He really is. Uh, Williams with 23, 24 for Kelsey. Uh, only 3.7 for Javante Williams traded mid-game, um, which we could discuss that later. <laughs> Uh, 11 for Bass and 15 for the Philadelphia defense in this game. Uh, for Wakanda, I mean, 12.1 for Chase, 17.6 for Lazard, 15.5 for Fryermuth, and then everybody else is garbage except for the New York uh, Giants defense with 16. But, yeah, I mean, yet another sub-100 week for, for Wakanda. It's not looking good for them. No, it is certainly not. And um... – I mean, there's no help from the bench either. <laughs> Hideous. Yeah, I mean, 14 for Cousins on the bench. I mean, Mustard had 10.10. I mean, and Manny could have really piled it on. How do you, you know, like you said, if he threw it on golf. I mean, there's really, well, yeah, if he played Sanders, like 200 points. Yeah, and he played Sanders instead of Williams, and then he, you know, golf. Yeah, definitely could have gotten him. But I talked him out of that. <laughs> it, it was more than enough to beat down Dr. Hockey's pitiful team. Yeah, though, though, frankly, I didn't. I, I, yeah, I mean, like, I don't. He, yeah, whatever. So interesting how impressionable he is. 
All right, moving on. Do you have anything else on this game? I don't think I have anything else. We can move. Let's let, let, let's fly by on these because it's already late here. And um, yeah, yeah. Let's, right. let's... Um, well, we got to see this fans game. Here's another beatdown. Another sub. All of these games are sub 100. <laughs> Ours was the only one where the loser didn't where they got where the loser got above 100. Um. 152.04 to 92.76 lightning rods over Zamunda. I mean, this is just a horrid fest. Other than Eckler, who got 34.9, and, and you had Tynan with 10.2, and then Aaron Jones with 14.5. Aaron Jones, the, uh, the former Zamunda Lion. Um, other than that, everybody's in single digits here. Like Lawrence, 9.6, 4.7 for Smith, 5.9 for Waddle, 2.9 for Robinson. I mean, it's just horrid. Again, and now he gets rid of one of the two guys that that, that gets double digits for him. Whatever. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> for the late ones, I mean, he he whipped out the hickory. Twenty for uh, Rogers, ten for Diggs, nineteen for uh, for Williams, Pierce with twenty five, and negative one point two for Melvin Gordon. Ouch. So that's one fifty two subtracting points for him. Thirty nine point nine from Hawkinson. That's obs- <laughs> you're, 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 you're 90 something what and actually pays off yeah uh 6.1 for Pittman 11 for Tucker and 21 points for the San Francisco defense I mean um I mean Debo with 23.7 now he's gonna play for you know and then, and then Pickens with 16 for two I, I don't know why he's holding on the field I don't whatever I don't know Brady with 31.4 points on his bench also, by the way. So this could have even been worse. Yeah. So just a beat. Down. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, Lightning Rods uh, moves to three and one really at the, the at the top of the league here. All right. Um, anything else on this game? Nope. And I believe, Nick, well, we'll talk about the standings afterwards. But yeah, this, this keeps him as the only team to not have won a game yet. Um. All right, moving on to Nick and Jamie. Uh, 150 to 150.88 to 97.12 over the Hartford Trash Pandas. Mm-hmm. Uh, named team. Uh, so for Nick and Jamie, 26.88 for Murray, 21.70 for Lamb, 30.3 for Mike Evans. Uh, the combo of Elliott and Pollard combined for 11.80. Um, Zach Ertz with 16.7, 25 for Higgins, 11 for Carlson, and then seven for the defense for the Trash Pandas. Uh, Carr only got 11.52. He was uh, traded immediately after the game. 31 for Justin Jefferson, so he returned this week. 19.50 for the former Trash Panda, (laughs) Devontae Adams. Uh, Gibson, who we just got in the trade, uh, only got 9.3, 1.3 for Akers, 4.4 for Kittle, 13.1 for Lockett, 5 for Gold, and 2 for Tampa Bay. Uh, Yet another performance where somebody got less than 100. Yeah, anything else here? (laughs) No, since we're moving right along, no. I mean, I well, I mean, you could if you have anything to add, we could we could add it to this. I don't (laughs) what's there to add. I mean, I still can't believe that uh, Nick and Jamie can, uh, you know, they're playing basically two teams and they still just, they get these kind of point totals. Two uh, teams are putting up 150 points. Holy crap. And they're playing this, and, and by the way, 11 points combined from, from, from the running backs. Two, and they're from the same team. They're the same, they're, they're the two running backs from Dallas. And they're still putting up 150 points. I don't know. What is, I mean... <laughs> It is beyond me. I don't know how their formula may pro copycats. I don't know. I, I I'd like to crack this code because it's quite it's quite astounding. Yeah. Uh, um. All right. Moving on to the spider web. If they start sneaking in, like Dobbins got twenty two point three. Does that? Well, that was the that... other thing. Well, I mean, we can go back to that game, but yeah, that was the other thing. Like they actually didn't even play their full complement of, uh, you know, opportunities there. It's still like... in the one seventies. I know. The spider web game, yeah, as exactly as predicted, <laughs> the dead fly fell into the spider web. 
<laughs> as Tillett moves to 4 and 0 with a whooping 110.8 to 75.76. I mean I mean oh God. so 9.3 for Wentz, 21.9 for Metcalf, only 1.9 for Cooper, 17.4 for Mixon, 18.4 for Fournette. Godert.com with 12.2, 10 for Connor, and 12 for the young ho. Uh, for clever name pending, 29.36 for Mahomes, and then just uh, other than Dalvin Cook, who just barely scratched double digits, nothing really there. Allen Robinson still well, sticking. If you want to put it in perspective, the kicker for Tilla Trey outscored everyone, <laughs> except for the quarterback. The kicker outplayed his entire lineup. That's embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> so did Godard.com. Like you could almost pick almost any one of his players, other than the quarterback, ironically. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So yes, another dead fly fell into the spider web. <laughs> and it's it doesn't change as we um, move ahead to the next segment. It gets even worse. Yeah, exactly. All right. Um, and then let's go to the fan who oh, actually he barely, I mean, you know, this is this, he was vulnerable here, but, um, you know, had he played any of the teams that won this week, I, did he have the lowest winning? No, obviously the spider web team had <laughs> a lower winning score, but everybody else, I mean, 150, 152. A 143, 135. Even you, in a losing effort, would have beaten him here. Uh, so he had the second lowest uh, winning score, but, you know, still winning score nonetheless. He uh, underperformed projections, but so did Gronky Khan. Um, as Dave Secret Crush moves to 4 0 and at the top of the league with a 117.86 to 99.36 victory. Hurts with only 15, 16.2 for Sutton, 14.5 for. Brown, Barkley with 18.2, 15.8 for Hall. Kyle Pitts continues to struggle with only 3.5, 18.7 for Brandon Cooks. Oh, had four, you know, made fun of his combo. Did, you know, well, still not as well as Cuff this week, but, you know, they did well. McPherson, who you dropped, got 11 and then four for Pittsburgh. Uh, for Gronky Khan, I mean, 15.06. I mean, he. we've been saying for weeks now that he's been riding, you know, Lamar Jackson. What happens if Lamar Jackson doesn't have a good week? Well, this is what happens. So, <laughs> so you know, Curtis Samuel, 7.8. Uh, he played Reynolds. Reynolds wrapped with 21.10. And then, uh, you know, and then Chubb got 20.7. But other than that, Najee has been a big disappointment with only 7.40 for Dalton Schultz. 7.3 for Ingram. Um, substituting in that game. Um, 15 for Joseph and five for the Minnesota defense, which, by the way, he picked up the defense that, uh, if you recall last week, I said. Oh, he- yes. Envelope, it was Minnesota. Yeah, it was Minnesota. And uh, they actually underperformed some of the other teams, including the one that I actually played. So I guess I was wrong on that. But, yes, Minnesota was the team. He picked them up and only got five. So, yeah. Um, I mean – you know, the fan keeps rolling. Yep. Fan keeps rolling. So does the, the dead spider web team. Yes, yeah, the dead spider web team. Um, so we will actually go over you and I can discuss the trades and then the standings and, and any of the transactions. Um before we get to that, I mean we're gonna take a quick break. As I uh, said, we uh, recorded a segment. With, uh, with the commissioner earlier uh, where he discussed the trades. Um, so we'll play that next. And then on the other side of that break, we'll come back and we'll discuss uh, a lot of the same stuff that we, uh, you know, I discussed with Manny. Anyway, uh, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, be right back uh, right after this. All right. Welcome back. Um, as previously alluded to, I have the commissioner on the, uh, on the video here who wants to discuss these trades <laughs> last week. Well, I mean, I have a wedding to go to, um, but these trades were so preposterous that like I had to make room in my day to squeeze some venting because, um, uh, 
Which of the trades is more ridiculous? Yours? Uh, okay, we can start with mine. Um, so <laughs> mine wasn't meant to be ridiculous. It was meant to be fair. I just got uh <laughs> I just got extremely lucky. What can I say? I find it actually hilarious because I, I did see that uh that the trade went like you would you you definitely had proposed it prior to him getting injured. I mean, I think it's ridiculous to trade in the middle of games anyway for this reason but the fact that it actually happened that he <laughs> after they accepted is kind of hilarious and then of course of course whalers notices this and then immediately you know right uh, right well i mean i was on my phone you know i was obviously looking at the scores and i was like looking at my roster and you know my wide receiver receiving core was weak and uh yes javante williams got me um you know, some big wins, but not with crazy point totals. So I was looking, you know, how can I trade him for like some, you know, mid-tier receiver? And I'm like, let's shop at Z-Mart. <laughs> what better place to do do so? Which, by the way, I warned you, I warned you when uh, you said that you did that. I said that, um, I said that that was going to open the floodgates and the doors to Z-Mart because other people will see this. And uh, as usual, I was <laughs> I mean, I was properly warned, but, you know, that didn't um, – if I can improve my team, I will I certainly the, do so. I love the categorization. Well, I didn't know that he was out for the season, but, you know, Whaler's always over-dramatizes stuff where he's like – Yeah. Uh, where he's like, he may never walk again. <laughs> <laughs> like, is he even actually injured? But, yeah. It was well, I initially offered him another trade, and then he rejected that. Um, I believe it was Miles Sanders – who was the guy that he dropped initially, but he's been performing well for um, he's probably not on that team anymore. Oh, I think Debo Debo Samuel. Okay. <laughs> but Debo was on his bench. So I was like, Oh, if you're not even going to start Debo, you know, like maybe you don't think that highly of him. So that was my, uh, you know, thought process. He, he rejected that smartly. Um, I probably would too, even though Sanders has been pretty good. That Philadelphia run game has been excellent. So um, I'm okay with that. And then, you know, I offered him the uh, Javante for uh, Juju trade and uh, I just got extremely lucky. What can I say? I mean, we uh, approved the trade before the injury happened. So um, but Juju hasn't pl- hadn't played yet, so it would have been funny if Juju got hurt in. Uh, That's true. You did take on in, uh, in the Sunday night game. He he did not. Um, he didn't have a fantastic game. I think they kind of got similar amount of points anyway. But um, so whatever, I'll take a free receiver. What can I say? <laughs> there you go. Um, and the, but I'm sure that that is not the trade that you are here to talk about. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get into the the nitty gritty here. Right. So the, the, the Hartford Trash Pandas um, traded away Dobbs. Is that how you even pronounce his name? I don't even know. Yeah. Romeo uh, Dobbs. Romeo Dobbs and Devontae Adams for Christian Kirk and Aaron Jones. Um, now, I will preface this by saying trading away we, Romeo and Juliet. There you go. <laughs> that everybody who ever trades in this league always gets scrutiny and everybody always uh, criticizes the trade. So this, of course, is no different. But um, why do you think – I'm assuming, first of all, you think that, that Z-Mart got ripped off. I just naturally assume – Absolutely. Um, I, I mean, assume. that being said, I did talk to um, Nick about it, and, you know, he was like, I've traded before. I've gotten cr- uh, scrutinized like never before, and I've calculated the point totals at the end of the year, and some of these trades I have won. So we will certainly do that um, at the end of the year. We will see actually who won the trade. I know Romeo Dobbs has the – makings or the um they say the potential to be the next Devonte adams for aaron Rodgers. i'm not buying that um i think there's more to be seen before you automatically assume that and Devonte adams has not been that great with uh Derek carr in in vegas so i mean i know throwing raiders at nick is like uh you know throwing gold at him it, it could be like you know the third string receiver and he'll accept a trade for a raider so it's the exact opposite of me. I actually made the mistake of having a jet and I was like, oh yeah, this is why I never get jets. Like, <laughs> yeah. jets. And then, uh, you know, whalers, uh, I don't know what to say. He has this, uh, this knack of, uh, 
kind of shafting people with trades because Kirk has been excellent this year. And Aaron Jones, I mean, he's definitely an RB one. Um, you know, he had a 33 point game against the bears on Sunday night. Um, that guy is a, is a very good running back. So you're also trading. I think the two players on, um, the whalers were, or the Kirk and Jones are better than both Adams and Dobbs. And you're giving away the position, which is harder to get in a, in a running back. I understand if it's for two receivers, but giving away a, a, a top tier running back, you know, when running backs are hard to come by, they're they're not easily found on, on in the trash can. Well, so Whalers has been trying to get a running back forever. He ended up making the trade with Geese last week mm-hmm. um, for Gibson, I think it was. Right? Is that what it was? Yeah, Gibson for Olave. Which and he by and he also had um um uh, what's his name Robinson the guy who was gonna yeah. Gibson eventually most likely um but that wasn't good enough so he went out and got the you know another running back I mean he was clearly he's been in the running back market forever um I mean it's hard to the only way you're going to get a good running back by trading is kind of by shafting because like I feel like if if I'm personally trading to get a running back. The receiver has to be quite a lot better because the running backs are harder to get. That's just my philosophy. I mean, I tend to agree. I mean, depend. Like, if you're talking about like a, a good running back, then you know, I mean, like, I think I don't think that. The, in fact, I would actually say that the Olave for uh, Gibson trade was probably more in Giza's favor. Uh, so I don't necessarily. I mean, I I I see what you're saying. I. In general, all things being equal, I would probably support that idea, though I think there are certain circumstances where that doesn't come into play. I think here I absolutely yeah. agree. I think that Aaron Jones is the is the um He's the best player in the trade for sure. Yeah, I mean and and Kirk is pretty good too. I mean like Kirk is Kirk is kind of similar, putting similar numbers to Devante this year. I would say they're pretty even in that trade. I mean, and he had one bad week, so he sells them when he's bad. Uh, but like yeah, I mean, and it, and it, and it. I mean, like I said this a while ago. I said that Whalers would 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 find a way. You know, when he said his team was crap, mm-hmm. everything else. I said I have faith, and I don't know if you can call it faith or whatever, but that he would he would find a way out of it, and he does. Uh, once again, yeah. I mean, because you look at the the composition of his team now, and it looks a hell of a lot better than it did before. And and Nick, oh, definitely. I mean, Nick is 0-4. He said he's trying to, he's willing to make some moves, but you got to, you got to make smart moves, buddy. (laughs) I mean, mean, well, he never does. And he could if he, I mean, he has. So, I mean, we'll see. I mean, I, you know, Nick said that um, he's willing to ride with, uh, with Waddle and, um, He doesn't need, but uh, Waddle also, by the way, came up in the injury report. And Waddle, by the way, is now having Bridgewater throw to him. I mean, I don't know how long. With Devontae Smith, uh, Waddle, and Samuel. I mean, he says he's pretty strong at uh, receiver. And then Eckler had a really good game last week. So I think he's, and then he can obviously throw Devontae in there. But, like, he's went from being strong at running back to now weak at running back. Yeah. And I don't know that's that's how you want to turn around an 0-4 start. No, I don't, I don't either. I mean, like he, I mean, I guess in his defense, he still has James Robinson who's had other than last week had a fantastic season. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think it's putting too much faith in him. And I think that he has, I mean, is he even, so is he even playing, um, what's his name, Dobbs in there? Like, I guess he'll put, I mean, he has too many wide receivers. I'm looking at this. So he has Debo still, still has Waddle, and then he's got, he's got, scan, uh, what do you call it, Dobbs. So he's got two of them. I mean, Gr- Gronky Kong and I were talking about shopping at Z-Mart the entire season because he had a ton of good receivers. I and he couldn't even, he always played the wrong one. So I give him that. He's kind of been unlucky with that. Sure. I so. just think it's, I, I, I I mean, you know, I'm always going to have a negative thought about what Nick does, but I just think it was an unnecessary trade. And, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. and I think, you know, Whalers, I mean, what are you going to say? I I just, I I just think that anybody that trades with Z-Mart gets the stain of Z-Mart on them. 
and and well deserved. Like I mean, you're abusing a child. <laughs> I, I, I you know, like I don't know what to say. Like you know, well, yeah. I mean, uh, Nick said that um, scoring wise, Jones and Adams may end up with similar points by year end. So. I guess I think that's the Raider fan talking in him because I, I don't think so. You know, I don't think Adams his chemistry with Carr has he's Adams is not the same with Carr as he was with Rogers. You know, I feel like Great. if this, if, if Adams was at green Bay, I feel like that would be a, an equitable trade when he's getting Dobbs. Uh, right. Well, yeah. Might but be Dobbs the- is not Adams. So Adams. We'll see. I, I look. I've seen Nick make way worse trades. Um, I don't think this is a good one. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, both of them have to turn their year around. I mean, Whalers is one and three, so I don't necessarily think his moves have been that great up to this point. I think this one is good for him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I think once again. I mean, I think the one who asked. Shockingly, comes comes out looking good in all of this is Eugene, <laughs> Eugene, who has the reputation as a shafter. Yeah, has I mean, look, he's 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 made ridiculous attempts. I've I've been on the receiving end. I'm sure everyone yeah. he probably has been, but he's four. He's done mm-hmm. um without any shafto trades. He's he's played smart. He's played he's played the right guys. He didn't, he didn't go shopping at Zmart to build this team. Yeah, I think he comes out of this looking even better. You know? good, yeah, I and the way the standings are, where the teams that are have winning records continue to win, and the teams with losing records continue to lose, he can run away from the pack if, if that if that trend continues. Yeah, and I think that so. Wales now has the Scarlet Z next to his team. So even if he turns it around, you know, I mean, look. Yeah, we, we we've been in a we know we know well enough that um, winning is the only thing in this league, and nobody give, nobody cares, right? <laughs> At the end, right. nobody re- people barely remember what got them the championship. They just know that they had the championship or whatever it may be. So if he's going to pillage. in this league, you could be like a billionaire, have like a supermodel as a wife. If you're losing in fantasy football, you're a loser. Exactly. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> he doesn't care. And he doesn't care, who, you know, but um, so a couple of things I have to actually run. But uh, so Gronky Kong, you know, his initial thought was like, as a commissioner, you have to veto the trade. Yeah. He was he was besides himself because he tries to build a team the correct way. He's an animal in the waiver wire. And, you know, he's not a fan of, you know, these kind of things, kind of taking advantage of someone being <laughs> By the way, Nick, I, I of the league, who is the only commissioner who has ever vetoed a trade, and it was my trade that he vetoed. So, um, and it <laughs> blew up the entire league. By the way, so it, it, the, okay. the, sure, fine, the surest way to get yourself ousted as commissioner certainly would be to veto a trade. Even yeah, if- I'm not vetoing something. I assume that you know it's everyone kind of discusses the trades among themselves before they hit the allow button or the accept button. So, I mean, the only um, way that, uh, the only way is if it was literally like literally like a mistake like you know i you know you right. press accept um and you meant to press um reject or something and like something and then you immediately right. brought that up like that would be the only way but other than that i and I, just for a little nugget in this i was off from work today so this morning i was kind of looking at the roster and i you know let me let me offer whalers a trade because i i know he wanted uh jamal williams so because he has uh deandre swift and he's constantly hurt so i was like okay I'm, I offered him um, Jamal Williams and the Lions and Adam Thielen for uh, Aaron Jones and uh, Tyler Lockett. Mm-hmm. Probably a slightly better trade for me. If you look at their point totals, it's pretty even. It's like, I would say 112. Williams in the mix, by the way. What was that? You could throw Javante Williams in the mix. I could. I could. <laughs> but your IR spots are filled up, so that's not going to do you any good. That's true. So, I mean, the, the point totals were even, um, and within, I would say, a minute, the trade was rejected. It wasn't, no thought was even given. <laughs> Whaler is, 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 is not, he's bright. He's not a dumb guy. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> he, 
He will cause all the drama that he wants. I was not trying to shaft him. I was trying I, – I agree Aaron Jones is the best player on the, in that deal. But I think uh, Thielen is actually picking it up, and I think he's actually better than Lockett. So if you – and the point totals are pretty even. So it wasn't, you know – I don't know. I, 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 this is why I don't even get involved in trades for the most part. I mean, I, even when I traded with, I traded with Wellers last year. We, we traded like injured players. I think it was, yeah, Catherine like Kittle. I don't even remember what it was. And even then, I, <laughs> afterwards, I think we ended up maybe trading back because we hated ourselves for doing it. I just don't, I've, I, I, I really don't like to trade. And especially, by the way, and and like I said, you weren't here for it, but the trade it was it was a lopsided trade. That mm-hmm. you know, I mean, there was no question that it was a lopsided trade. However, the other person in the league, WrestleMania man, was the one who offered it to me. I actually offered him like a reasonably fair trade. He countered with a ridiculous, <laughs> trade, and it would have been a fool to reject. I accepted, uh, and then the league went up in arms because it was an unfair trade. But I was like, but he like, and then they they're accusing me of like, and I'm like, he he gave it to me, <laughs> he wants, and I should get to keep it. But whatever. So that's why there's no no feet away. But anyway, yeah. I mean, well, yeah. Anyway, I got I got to go, but uh, I'm back from my bye week after the Wakanda beat down. So that that was that that was like a bye week for me. So. <laughs> Like stressing out about the game, I was like, "Why? Why does it even matter?" And you got off the start with Tua going down, which made it even worse. So you know, um, who you play this? Tua, Tua will be back, right? So he's worth putting in an IR spot. I, I mean, know. who knows at this point with what, what went on the last couple of weeks? Well, quickly because uh, while I have you here, so you, this week you play. Who you play this week. You play. I play Eugene. Eugene, this big, the, this big, big game. Big game, yeah. Um, big game. Quickly, your thoughts on your game, and then, then you can go. Um, I like my matchups this week. Um, I like Burrow going against Baltimore. Um, hopefully not a m- monsoon, but uh, that defense in Baltimore tends to um, give it up. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a good matchup. Um, I like Davis against Pittsburgh. I think Buffalo is going to get back uh, to their normal attack. They've been kind of sluggish on offense. Uh, Thielen, I mean. Actually, uh, Cousins has been looking to- for him because Jefferson's been getting double covered every possession. Um, Henry's picked it up in the last two weeks, and I like him against Washington. Uh, the Philly running attack against Arizona I like a lot. Kelsey against uh, Vegas I like a lot. Going to play Juju as well, um, my free receiver. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Pass against Pittsburgh and then Philadelphia. I'm, I'm riding it high with the Philadelphia defense. They've been awesome to me. They probably got me uh, the week three win against um, Gronky Kong. Um, so uh, I like my matchups a lot. That being said, I do like um, Eugene's team. Um, I think Herbert against Cleveland is a good matchup for the Chargers. Although it's, it's, um... I'd probably play Hurts, but... I mean, hurts, but it's kind of a, a win win for him there. Um, AJ, or what do you call it? AJ Brown. He'll be AJ good. Brown. I mean, Saquon has been lighting it up. I, I, I like that he's going against, I don't like that he's going against Green Bay because Green Bay can't stop the run. That being said, the game is in London. So, oh, yeah, look at that. You no, know, it's, uh, I thought about going to this game actually before the season's hits. Pitts has been disappointing. Um, so, I mean, I think I would be the underdog, but the fact that my matchups are good kind of makes it a 50, 50. I mean, that's, like, that's how I look at it. Technically the projection right now is in your favor. 129.5.56 to 123.62. So yeah, technically the underdog or dog right now. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, we also have to see if Mumra plays, um, yeah. you know, um, uh, are those questionable guys going to play? So there's still some to be. Yep. decided so should be interesting yeah all right well in the next segment uh geez and i will actually discuss this game and we'll probably because it'll be after the thursday night game has already at least started so we'll see how i okay. ended up doing so we'll discuss it there uh along with all the other games but uh thanks for joining us before the wedding and um you're very welcome well good luck everyone this week all right. uh, see you soon all right we'll see you all right. right back after this break all right see ya Everything. 
Um, now we can uh, get your opinions on on some of this stuff. Um, uh, well, also, you know, I I, I kind of well, should we do the, the 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 stand? Let's do the well. Uh, we can do the transactions. All know. right, let's do the transactions first because there were some controversial moves made. Yeah, so, well, first of all, I guess we could start with the uh, the. the f- I mean, do we do, all, do we do we want to do the free agent bidding? I mean, I don't think there's anything really of note. I mean, so be mostly very quiet. Yeah, I know. So Boone was picked up. Um, by the way, so this segment that we're recording right now is already so the Thursday night game has already taken place. Um, it's a horrid game. I, I'm actually curious if he um, as you as you drop people mid uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> Shows you how much you're paying attention, but uh, yeah, so Boone was picked up. We'll see if we played him. I didn't even actually look at any of this stuff. Uh, green, the Green Bay defense uh, was picked up by Nick and Jamie, uh, beating out the Trash Pandas who bid six and Gronky Con for five. Uh, so Boone went to Gronky Con who I bid the Trash Pandas. Um, and then that was it on this week's uh, oh, wait, that was no, so Green Bay was last week, so there was only one actual bid, and that was uh, Mike Boone. Um, if we've got all transactions. That's where a lot of this controversy comes from. So a lot. So it basically started on Sunday with Manny and you and Nick, which I told I told Manny, um, and, and we just discussed this too. But like I said, once you trade with Nick, that that it's going to signal that Zmart is open, and <laughs> and and the floodgates would open, and of course that's exactly what happened. And, oh yeah, and 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 not only that. So he trades mid game, and of course the player that he trades. And now now the trade did take place. It was agreed to. Uh, the and the only reason why he couldn't process is because he, the, the player was literally playing on his team as he was traded. <laughs> um, but it did process before the injury, and then of course the injury happens, and of course it happens to the player that he traded. Um, I don't really. I mean. You know, the over dramatization about like he may never walk again. I mean, you know, like I, I, he always does that for every injury that ever happens. But I mean, it was season ending, I guess. Look at that. Well, I mean, plus the thing about Manny is he's, he offered Nick a chance to get out of it, which is a very gentlemanly thing to do. And Nick honorably, you know, said a hey, deal's a deal, took the IR player. And I mean, what did Shyster Smith do anyway? I mean, he got. Nine points, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, and and look, you should. I, I, as I said in the comments the other day, I mean, if you trade mid game, I, I mean, you deserve what happens to you. I, I, I just why, 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 what? I don't like. Why are you trading mid game? Wait to see what happens. Wait to see if they walk off the field. I, I just there's no reason. You, you're not going to be- benefit from them this week. There's just no. Like why, you're you're just putting too much risk on yourself. This this exact risk, which which ended up happening. I, I just don't see the point. Mm. So whatever. Okay. So then that happens. But I I really don't think that there was anything wrong that happened here. They made the trade. It was before he knew there was any injury. It was just a trade, and it just happened to be completely un you know unfortunate. What happened? I, I don't really think that there's any controversy there. Um, you can make it out to be dramatic afterwards, but I just, I don't, you know? It, it would have been the same if he had traded him the day before and when the game happened and if it would have processed and he still would have gone down and injured. It, 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 there was no knowledge that this was going to happen So I, I, when the trade was made. So, I mean, you could evaluate whether or not you think the trade itself was good. I don't think that we even got into a discussion of whether or not the, the trade itself was good. So what was the trade exactly? Um, where is it? I'm trying to find it. What, the most the most controversial one? No, no, I'm talking about the, the, the one. I'm talking about the one that, that Manny made with Nick. What was the trade there? It was... Um, oh, Javante Williams for Juju? Yeah, for Juju. I mean, you could evaluate whether or not you think that the trade was... I mean, Juju... Having a blockbuster season. I mean, what, what did he get? He got 11, 4, 13, and 9. I mean, it's, he's a pretty average player. 
And and Javante Williams was having a pretty average season too. I think it was like eleven. Mm-hmm. Nineteen, nine, nine, and three. Yeah. So I mean, I think that that was one of the few rare trades where it seemed to be pretty even. Though, um, ironically, and Manny just talked about this during uh, his his interview where he said that he thinks you got to give more if you're going to get you know if, if you're going to give away a running back, you got to get more out of the receiver. Yet he just did that whole. He just did that. In, in this trade, he gave away a running back, which he didn't. I don't think that he got any more for it by, by you know, but whatever. Um, all right. And then as far as the other transactions, I don't really care about any of these other ones. But yes, we could talk about the other trade, the uh, the controversial one, which I mean, I, I have said this many times. I don't even get involved in the trade market if I can avoid it because I just. Everybody always, no matter, I, I don't care who you trade. Everybody's always up in arms about every trade. Every trade is unfair. It's, it's, it's the worst thing to ever happen. How can this, how can the commissioner let this happen with every single trade that ever happens in this league? Um, yeah. So here's another one. <laughs> Romeo Dobbs and Devontae well, Nick, Adams. Nick loves, okay. Mm-hmm. Like he, he wanted Devontae Adams. It's a Raider. Nick loves his Raiders. All you got to do is package up Raiders. I mean, Devontae Adams is, is going to be a primary target, you know, all the time. So, And Dobbs could theoretically be, look, I think I think this makes, look, I think Christian Kirk is way better. And I think that Aaron Jones is, I mean, you know, is, is also, I, 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 look, do I think it's a smart trade? No, I, look, on, on the scale of Z-Mart trades, this is not the worst I've seen. <laughs> I mean, it's standard par for the course of bad trade. And like I said, as I said to Manny, you know, like if you're going to trade with, with Nick, I mean, the trash pandas now have the Scarlet Z attached to their name. You know, <laughs> if they improve, we know that they improved because, because of Z-Mart. I mean, this is why you don't trade with Z-Mart, you know. Not like anything that the Whalers does from this point on this season, people are gonna just say, Yeah, I mean, well, it's because he traded with Zemar. I mean, that's what turned his season around. You know, the interesting thing about this trade is it, I mean, is Kirk an upgrade for Adams? I mean, they're, they're pretty much on par with each other. I think actually Kirk is having the slightly better season so far. So far, um, Jefferson, you know, he's he's back. He's boom. He seems like he's a little boomer bust. But oh, this I, is- oh go ahead. Yeah, no, I just when when he gets Swift back, obviously, you know, Whalers is going to be a force again. But ironically enough, as you look up and down the lineup, it's dare I say it, it's the same. <laughs> you think so? I actually think this makes his team way better. It. it I think I mean, if, Aaron Jones. Well, I think that, what he was lacking most. Down, what are you looking? At ones down. I mean, we'll get to we'll get to it when we when we do the matchups this week. You know, as we get to the next segment. But I'm just looking over the team. I mean, there there is a, there is an upgrade factor, but it just I think that Whalers is going to look to add a few more pieces to this puzzle. Oh, of course, he's always looking. But you know, uh, but I just think that Aaron Jones. Look, he he was having massive problems he was hemorrhaging at the, at the running back position so i mean he trades with you to get you know to get a running back that was frankly i think that was probably balanced in your favor in that one i don't think that he and i think that he even acknowledges that mm-hmm. better yeah than that yeah one. um just to get a running back and then but then he goes and gets like a really good running back for for, for like not enough, I, I feel like. I don't think Romeo Dobbs. I mean, because like, okay, let's say you change Christian Kirk for for Devontae Adams. I think that that's a reasonable comparison, right? Mm-hmm. Then you're making the Romeo Dobbs to Aaron Jones. I mean, come on, that's not. I I, I don't think that that's pretty. I don't think that that, that that's even. I mean, Gronky Kong lobbying for a veto. It's not going to happen. I mean, you can't. There's nothing to veto. I mean, the only thing you can do is is, is attach the Scarlet Z to to, to Whaler's name and, and and anyone's name that that that, that that you know that takes a picture. Of Nick. I don't know what else to say. I also don't know what um, you know. I'm, I'm sure. 
I think, frankly, this is easier to defend. I mean, look, what are you going to veto? Huh? <laughs> What's there to veto? It's I, Rocky Kong. Just I, I don't know. He just he feels like the trade is just you know, unbalanced, and it it's a prime territory for the commissioner to step in and be like, no, 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 no. But but to your point, if these guys want to trade. You know, more power to them. Just let them trade. I mean, you're the victim of the veto with WrestleMania, man. Yeah. And 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 in that, I, and as I said in the last segment, I mean, like that was an unbalanced trade, but WrestleMania Mad offered me the unbalanced trade. I should not be punished for what another person offers. <laughs> and the same goes here. Whalers should not be punished. Because Nick makes a bonehead move. I mean, he does it every season. I don't know what you know. I you know I I I, I don't know what to say. Mm. I mean, it happens every year. I mean, I, I as, and as I said to to Manny in the last segment, I'll say the same thing to you. The person who comes out looking best in this, shockingly, is the fan. Is Eugene, who. You know, has many years been labeled as the Shafto trader of the year. He hasn't this year. I mean, he's made some attempts, but whatever. And then, you know, he hasn't. He he's just for for you know, Eugene has been winning the right way. He, he you know he just he built a team. He is not Shafto trade. Even after this happens, and, and who knows what will happen tomorrow? <laughs> it could happen mid sentence uh, that he will now take advantage of Nick. But he hasn't. He hasn't needed to. He built a good team and he's, you know, so I, I I think that he, you know, can buoy his reputation this year by not giving himself the Scarlet Z. Whereas, um, you know, but I, I guess if you're, you know, in the position where you're one in whatever, you might as well take the Scarlet Z. I mean, whatever. I didn't. Conda didn't. A lot of other teams didn't. Mm. But I, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't know what to, uh, you know. I mean, what do you do with it? You go, you move on. Exactly, you move on. I mean, just this happens every year. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know how it's possible that Nick does this every year. But like I said, in the pantheon of terrible new moves that Nick has made. This is just minorly bad. Man, mm. I, I don't know. I mean, because where, where, where's the egregiousness in this? I don't see why he gave away Jones, because if you look at Nick's lineup... Oh, I, I don't, yeah, no, I, I mean, it doesn't make sense to do this. <laughs> don't give me wrong. This is not even... Are you going to sit Devontae Adams? Yeah, or at all? Not even any room for Dobbs. Like, I don't understand why he even agreed to that. I, I don't either. I mean, like, I mean, I guess he's going to play Robinson or whatever, but I just doesn't. It, it makes zero sense. Look, it, it makes no sense for him to have done that. You know, Robinson and Eckler are the, you know, the they're cemented in at running back, yeah. and he's Devontae Smith of the Eagles. I mean, he powered his way for thirty point nine points two weeks ago. I mean, that's another weapon. There's there's really no room on the roster for Dobbs. I mean, imagine if he had kept Jones. I mean, he'd be a powerhouse. Yeah. So you play, you, you play Eckler, Jones, Robinson. I mean, Nick's problem this year, by the way, has been that he's had unfortunate, um, you know, like he's played the wrong guy in the wrong weeks. But it's not, it's not a lack of personnel that he's had. But this is what happens with Nick. He drafts a bunch of good players. He always does. Um. And then, like, I mean, even Pickens. Pickens was a good, you know, I, I, somebody that, that, that was off people's radar. You know, I mean, I guess he's starting to come, become on people's radar. But, um, you know, he had him before anybody else. Which is another wide receiver that he, to add to his wealth of wide receiver. Like, why? Why? I mean, now he's stuck in a position where he has how many wide receivers and he has no backup running back. If anything happens to a running back, he's screwed. Ironically, yeah. I mean, he just traded for Javon Adams and we lost. I mean, what are you doing? I mean, uh, 
like I said, I don't think it's veto worthy, but it's certainly criticism worthy. Like, what are you doing? Why do you do this every? Like, why? Why? But how? I mean, but how frustrated can you get when you just expect it? <laughs> why did you say? Well, because it's in my nature. Got a bunch of players. I mean, this lineup is. I mean, really, really good. But it could be so much better with with Jones. I mean, you could have almost gotten away with the way Christian Kirk is playing a Jones for Adams direct switch. You mean a Kirk for for Adams? Yeah, Kirk for Kirk for Adams direct direct trade, and maybe there's no reason to do anything beyond that. Yeah. There's no re- if you if you want Devonte Adams because you like the Raiders, I mean, there's no reason to do anything beyond that. I mean, Kirk was was I mean that that part of the trade was pretty pretty even. No reason to do anything. You don't have to do anything beyond that. Plus, he had the two first. I mean, if he, I mean, even let's just say he kept Kirk. Trevor Lawrence is his quarterback. Mm-hmm. Throw it to Kirk in the end zone. That's an easy two for us. I mean, I mean, Debo did get 23. I mean, Debo Samuel's been another performer. I mean, he could have uh, – Nick's, Nick's got a very decently – like you said, he just plays the wrong guy now and again. He, has, he doesn't one have point. enough patience. Auto. He doesn't have enough patience to see it through. Mm-hmm. And, and it's going to cost him. And it's going to benefit the Whalers. I mean, like, I don't know what else to say. On Nick Zavari, is it? it's not really a criticism, but like you said, towards patience, he had prior to that trade, he had a loaded roster. Yeah. All he had was kind of, I know you're 0 3, but take your time, bring some talent on and free agency if you want to. Which he can spot, by the way, because he's very good at that. Yeah, but you, you, you did really, it was a giveaway. The Jones move was a giveaway, mm-hmm. and the Kirk move was kind of a little rash. Like if you step back and take a look at this team, there's no reason to give those guys away. I agree. I don't. I don't think that you need Devontae Adams for for Christian Kirk. I don't think that you need it, but I think that it's reasonably uh, equitable. I, I I think that that's fine. You want to do that, whatever. Dobbs, there's no reason to have him on your team. There's no. Well, that's the kick in the nuts because Jones is going to be in Nick's lineup most weeks anyway. Um, and and, and now Waddle's questionable, so probably. For Waddle, you're not going to put in Dobbs. You're probably going to put in Devontae Smith of the Eagles because Jalen Hurts is having a tremendous year. Mm-hmm. Or Pickens even you could put in with – although, you know, you got to wait to see if – I think what is it, Pickett? The, mm-hmm. the there. I mean, I don't know why he's carrying fields. Um, I mean, it's just an interesting move. It's just – everybody obviously has opinions on it. And, uh, don't be surprised to see Nikki Baby pile up some wins just from – just from his roster can put up points. I know. The problem is going to be is that he he is – if anything happens to a running back, he's screwed. And if James Robinson, who only got like two points last week – like if, if Etu Etienne starts taking over like people thought at the beginning of the season was going to happen and James Robinson becomes, you know, an afterthought, then he has no backup. He would have had Aaron Jones and gave him up. For Dobbs, for another wide receiver, who, who by the way has had two good weeks, so maybe maybe he's becoming the, the, the guy. But it just, I don't like the move. Like I said, I don't think it's the most egregious thing that he's ever done. I don't think that it's worthy of all, all the consternation. I, just as a criticism of the trade, I don't think it was a wise thing for him to do. I think it was a wise move for the Whalers, and I think that if you're going to trade, if you're going to shop at Z Mart. Then yes, you do get the Scarlet Z. So you know, As Manny. By the way, Manny gets the Scarlet Z too. In fact, he's the one who started it. So he's not he's not escaping the criticism uh, here either. All right, I think we've covered that trade extensively. Uh, yes. Yeah. So now let's look at the standing. So once again, <laughs> uh, Dave uh, Dave Supercrush stays at the top of the league with five hundred and thirty eight points. Um, you're actually the second closest. The only, oh well, no, sorry, the last. Yeah, the Hagglers are third in scoring. We're the only two and two team in the league, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, the so, Hagglers borderline. Everybody below the Hagglers is two games under 500. Everybody above the Hagglers is at least two games 
over 500. Yeah. And then, of course, two unbeatens. Yes, and uh, yeah, exactly. Um, and then the point against, if we look at that, um, so Zamunda, by the way, just to go to the, 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 the point, Zamunda has had the most points against, 554, uh, uh, followed by the 1603s with 535 points against. Uh, so, you know, we'll see how this all ends up playing out. I mean, we moved up to seventh with our with our one win because of our point totals. The sixteen oh three has moved up to seven. They moved last to seventh. Um, Three teams just from points points scored. Right, it's kind of what I alluded to last week. Is that you know there's no reason for us to panic at that point because you know we've been scoring points. We just had a lot of points against. Us. We've had a very difficult schedule uh, to face, and we're having even more problems this week as we uh, now <laughs> look forward to this game already. Um, anything else in the standings though, or on the trade well, transactions? No, no, that's pretty much it. Um, I mean, yeah. I, so yeah, so Tilla Trey. Oh, yeah, one more thing. So the Tilla Trey. I mean, four hundred and thirty points. I mean, where does that put them in the points for category? I mean, they are Tilla Trey. So they are one, two. Sorry. Well, well, let's just say Ooh, it does four five from the bottom. All have more than four hundred thirty. And one, two, three, three looser teams, three one and three teams have more than 430. What? For points four? I mean, for points four, there's only three teams that are sub 400, and that's the Trash Pandas, the, the Zamunda Lions are 387, and then Wakanda with only 351 on the season. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, till it's got, I mean, what are we, a quarter of the way into the season already? I mean, it, He's padded that 4-0 mark, and it could be – I'm not going to say it could be 5-0 because wouldn't it be ironic if, if Zamunda, with all the trade shenanigans, gives him his first – I mean, if you look at the projection, Zamunda is favored right now. So, mm. um, I mean, we can start there if you'd like. Let's start in that game. Let's let's start at the spider web versus the, the scarlet letter right now. Yeah. Um, all right, so nobody's played on Thursday night, so this is a fresh projection. Uh, and the projection currently is 125.60 to 119.27. Um, so you got Trevor Lawrence against Houston. I like that matchup, actually, for Lawrence. Wentz versus Tennessee, I don't like that matchup for Wentz. And I think that Wentz has certainly cooled down after the first couple of weeks where he was really laying it up. And now, you know, but I think that Tennessee doesn't play that, you know, like a really high scoring type of game. So I would give the advantage to Lawrence here. Debo going against Carolina. Carolina is just atrocious. And I think that Debo is going to have a good game. Um, Metcalf uh, at New Orleans. I mean, New Orleans is a trash fire. So, (laughs) sure. Uh, Amari Cooper finally had a bad game last week. But, I mean, he's been pretty damn good before that. They're going against the Chargers. So that's a good matchup there for for Tillett. Um, I mean, well, I just, you know, it depends on what's going on with Waddle. Um, what's the latest on groin return to practice? But he also doesn't have Tua, by the way. So, I mean, maybe put in one of the other receivers that he went to go get. I, you know, I actually wouldn't necessarily play Waddle there. Eckler and Robinson. So I think Robinson should have a good game and, I, and Eckler as well. Um, Mixon at Baltimore, that's probably a good spot for him. And Fournette, you know, good. He'll, he'll, do about what he's been doing, you know, I think, uh, uh, versus Atlanta. Actually, he might even do better. I think he'll, he'll, he'll you know, somewhere between, uh, you know, I, I think he'll, about his projection, I think that's a that's a reasonable projection, 17.35. Um, Godard at Arizona, I think that that's a good position for him. Um, and Tanyan versus the Giants. Tanyan had a good game last week. Uh, this is in the London game, by the way. I don't even know that good a game. You know, like Goddard in Arizona is going to be good because it's Philly. It's, it's Zach Ertz's ex team. Yeah, and while he's on his current team, they they're going to want to outdo each other. Yeah, so that's going to be a high school game. Goddard, huge. Yeah. Um, and then he's got uh, Devonte Adams. Ironically, on the Monday night. Uh, so so this game could come down to to the trade uh, that happened. 
uh, going against Connor versus Philadelphia. So that's going to be uh, a good game there as well. I actually, um, this should be like actually, I, uh, I, I don't think this is a spider web game. I think this is going to be a high scoring kind of game, actually. I think it could be. Mm-hmm. I think there's potential for it for, for both of these teams to score a decent amount of points. Um, I, th- you know, I think, I think I'm going to give a slight edge to Zamunda and I'm only going to do it because, um, I think that Lawrence and Robinson against, uh, Houston will do better than Wentz. Um, they really better than Wentz. I mean, I think that that's really what it comes down to. But I mean, I could see Tillett getting this one out. I mean, because he's got strong, he's got strong play throughout the rest of uh, this lineup as well. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say Nikki Baby has the firepower to finally make some noise. Yeah. And ironically, it would be. Uh, I mean, oh, could, yeah, he's just he's just gonna chat away if uh, if uh, Devonte Adams wins it for him on the Monday night. That would. Be- oh, oh yeah. He'll take a victory lap. He, he certainly will. Um, and he can take it against our co-host. But like uh, like I said, I, I don't think there was the why. I, actually, that's the part of the trade that I I, I said fine with. Um, all right. Let's just get to my game, which is already underway. Three plays in or something like that. Uh, Hines got knocked out, so I have only a 1.8. The good news is, uh, so he had one reception, five receiving yards. So the original projection was 123.17 to 123.06. That gets knocked down to 109.85. However, he's finally not playing uh, both Pollard and uh, Elliott. Hopefully this is a good Pollard game <laughs> as they go against the Rams because he's put in Dobbins. So we have Tannehill going against Washington. Washington gives up a lot, you know, and thank God, by the way, that he didn't play Russell, who uh, ends up with 9.6, uh, 9.16. So, uh, you know, I didn't get I didn't get deceived by his fool's gold from last week. Um, so hopefully Tannehill, I mean, he certainly should outplay that, but hopefully he does uh, well against Washington. Uh, going against Kyler Murray versus Philadelphia, I mean, I think Murray's going to have a great game. I mean, I think, I, 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 you know, these are tough matchups for me this week and good matchups for him. So we have Cooper Cup going against Dallas, and he's got CeeDee Lamb going against the Rams. So, you know, that game will be heavily involved in this. Um, we'll see uh, if Jacoby Myers plays against Detroit, but obviously those scores have been really high. We'll see also if that game is a high-scoring high game because New England has a way of slowing down these games and not making them as high scoring. Um, so we'll see. Um, if Myers doesn't go, then I have decisions to make. I mean, maybe we'll put in Devontae Parker. I, I don't know. I mean, I think Parker will become largely – I mean, like, even even if I, – I still don't even know – I mean, who's the quarterback? I mean, there's, there's talk that they could just go, you know – you know, like all running to Ramondre Stevenson and what's his, and 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 Damian Harris all all game long, you know, because so who knows if they don't have a quarterback? So who knows? Um, Mike Evans versus Atlanta. That's a fantastic matchup for him uh, over there. Um, certainly better than than Myers. I mean, uh, Myers without a quarterback. <laughs> uh, McCaffrey against San Francisco. That's a tough defense. It's tough. You know, I think they're the number one run defense in the league. Uh, going against Elliott Ellie against the Rams, who surprisingly are not a very good run defense. Um, obviously, Hines already has 1.8 points. So that sucks. And then Doc <laughs> going versus Cincinnati. Uh, then you got Ertz, who you just mentioned, uh, who's going to have probably a great game. Going against Andrews, who hopefully has a good game. But, you know, I mean, I think that Ertz can keep up with him this week. Higgins, I guess, he's is he still questioning? What's going on with Higgins? Um... Higgins uh, still has an ankle issue. It looks like he'll probably play. Um, going against Herbert at Minnesota. I mean, that's a decent matchup for, for them. We got to figure out who we're going to put in a kicker, which that will be decided after we decide who we're going to keep in this lineup, depending on who's out. And, ugh, there's a whole bunch of mess that I got to deal with this week. 
on this team. And then the New England defense going into Detroit, um, which theoretically that should be a bad matchup for us, but I, I'm just sticking with New England. I like the defense. At least I like their floor. He's going with Green Bay versus the Giants in London, which could, you know, especially with the Giants not having a quarterback. I mean, who's, who's, who's their quarterback now? I don't think, I don't think they have one. Was it Saquon like, like that tried last week? I don't even know. Um, oh, wow. So we both had, we both benched. The, the, the two quarterbacks from tonight's game, he and Matt Ryan, who only got a 6.14 on my bench. So my my crap bench quarterback got more than his crap bench quarterback. So at least we're ahead in that game so far. Uh, the actual game, we might not win, but uh, at least we, we, we all played him there. I, I, you know, I pick uh, my opponent every week, but I'm certainly going to pick him this week. It's looking we're, – we're in pretty dire straits this week. Um, so I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm going with Nick and Jamie to move to four and one and us to move to one and four. I'd like that to not be the case, but you know, looking at it, that's what I would pick. That's yeah, so I'm picking that same thing. All right, let's move on to the next game. Um, where shall we go? Um, there's a bunch of int- um, let's go to this game. <laughs> Clever name pending versus Wakanda Panthers. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so he doesn't have a defense, so maybe add at the most 10 points. It's still projected to get under 100. Yeah. Wow, so he's starting Geno. Oh, wow. So the projection is very interesting. What? So so hockey now, (laughs) he's gone from Tua to Geno Smith. (laughs) Doesn't he have another quarterback? Why is he going? That's Kirk Cousins. He he won't play him. (laughs) (laughs) My God, this team is so bad. Uh, so he's going with Geno Smith against New Orleans. Okay, sure. Um, then he's got Jamar Chase, who has done, you know, not he's not done really well for what we'd expect for Jamar Chase, but he's done fine. Yeah. That's not Jamar Chase kind of numbers. Right. And then he's got Lazard, who I guess is doing well. He's going against the Giants. That's a decent matchup there. He's finally not so for the for clever name pending. First of all, he's got Mahomes versus Vegas. I think. I mean, you saw what Russell did, who hasn't done shit this entire season. You got Mahomes going against them on Monday night. I think right there that's going to win the game. Uh, just for for clever name pending, in and of itself, let alone anything else. So then he's got Deontay Johnson, um, who other than last week uh, has had a pretty good week. I don't know. His hip was limited in Thursday's practice, but he's got this new guy coming in. So, you know, pick it or whatever. We'll see how that affects his, his game. DJ Moore, I think that that's a bad play. Does he have anybody else that he could put in there? Because DJ Moore, this is what I'm going to tell you right now. And I heard some, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stealing this from somebody else that I heard on a podcast, but uh, who basically said that this is the kind of game where it can be so bad for the, for the Panthers that people start to get fired. Because you have the San Francisco defense going against the atrocious Baker Mayfield and, and Carolina Panthers, and and it, it, they could get shut out. Is how bad they might be this week. Um, I don't think DJ Moore is going to have a good game. I don't think that Baker can get the ball to anyone. I think he's terrible. We saw that in the Arizona game. He was hard- like, you were like, he turned it over again. Yeah. Now, one advantage that. Um, the clever name pending has is that they are going against the backup. Their running back is the starting running back going against the backup on the same team. <laughs> so. I mean, hockey has so many problems. I mean, this running back situation is abysmal. <laughs> that might be the worst running back tandem in the league. So, so he had Taylor go down. Not yeah. mid game, thankfully for him, so he didn't have to. Put, of course, he's not even using the IR spot to pick up some Jabron. Nothing. He just he just has him on the whatever. Um, so he's going with backup. So he's going with Madison and most. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> against Cook and Jacob Waller going against Fryermuth. I actually think maybe Fryermuth might be able to keep up. Although you know, I, I don't know. And then Rashard Penny against uh, Jay Reynolds, who we picked up after last week from Gronky Kong, who jumped, who was jumped in the trash. Elliot, is he even playing? He's got a zero next to his name. Why? He's questionable. 
Why would you have a questionable kicker? Don't even bother. Just throw him out. <laughs> Why are you carrying a questionable kicker? By the way, the 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 kicker who ruined the championship game for me. You want uh, whatever, whatever. Okay. And then you don't have a defense. And then he's got Buffalo going against Pittsburgh. Obviously, clever name pending. I, I'm pretty sure this is going to be my lock of the week. Oh, absolutely. With this mess, this this is rolling dumpster fire. <laughs> rolling down the street. Wow. In the stream, like that that dumpster fire, you know, that's like like floating down the river. Wow. Yeah, definitely going with clever name pending to write the ship on this one. Okay. Where to now? Um, should we save the well obviously the fan always goes last, so you know that. The fan goes last against finest. Um, let's go to me and Gronky Con. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. have their eye on this matchup every season. Oh yeah. This is like your and, this is, yeah. and- comes in at a surprising one in three. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're better at two and two, but you know, Gronky Kong has made some interesting moves this season. He's been one step ahead on a couple of guys, but he it hasn't been classic Gronky Kong where he just has these wow you moments. I mean, it's, he's been a little underwhelming this season. I think um, he's made right and Chubb. I think that he's made a lot of the really like. The intelligent moves to make, but they haven't panned out, kind of thing. Like you know, like and, and we, look, and I said this at the beginning of the season. He, he could either be a you know have a boom kind of season, or or things can fall apart. And and we because you know he had the three running backs. It was uh, Chubb, uh, Kamara, and um, who's the other running back that uh, Harris has been mediocre. Yeah, and Harris, who's also been bad. So two of the three have been pretty bad. I mean, Chubb has been good but i mean other than that i mean that's really been driving him down and he's playing with kamara again against yeah Seattle. it was a tough defense but anyway I'll, I'll let you get into the analysis of this but yeah i mean i think he's yeah. making moves, but but to your point he's making the moves i just don't think that they're panning out for him. but yeah go ahead. i mean first of all he rode lamar jackson the jackson train finally got derailed against buffalo maybe they get back on track with cincinnati um i gotta tell you like Josh Allen in the monsoon in Baltimore. It wasn't like pouring rain, but it was it was a mess. They were dropping the football all over the place. Allen looked terrible. I mean, they they rallied in the second half, so he got a respectable amount of points, but he finished with 25, which is respectable. But I mean, he he's one of the top top three quarterbacks in the league, so I, I expect him to rebound. Uh Tyree Kill had a fantastic Thursday night, but there's the curse on Thursday nights. You start off hot, you lose. Um He's questionable all of the sudden, which everybody in this league just pops up midweek questionable, which is nonsense. And that's another reason when we go back to Nick Zaveri, like, you got to have depth, you know? So you, all these cues start popping up. You have to have people to plug in in the roster. Especially at the running back position where there's a lot of injuries that happen all the time. Mm-hmm. So this buffoon Tyreek Hill has a quad situation, which came out of nowhere. I don't even know. I mean, what trust me. Quad- Weekly to me on with, with McCaffrey, and, then, and you know there's there's an issue here with Keenan Allen. I don't know what to do with this looser. He he has had a hamstring injury now for four weeks, <laughs> four week hamstring injury for this guy, and they say he's going to be out again. So I think Ronky Kong is going to benefit from that. Um, Godwin, I don't know what's going on with Godwin. He's just back and forth with injuries as well. Um, he's actually. This- Oh, well, let's see. According to him, he practiced he, with, you know, the knee. I mean, this is a good this is a good matchup for him if he could play. Curtis Samuel is an interesting situation. He's got a quote-unquote illness. What is what is the critical drinker said? An unknown <laughs> an un, unspecified oh, <laughs> an unknown. unspecified origin. The uh... <laughs> Wait, what is it? The uh... president's refusing to say it's COVID, but is it unspecified illness with unknown origin? Yeah, the, the unspecified illness from of un, unknown origin. <laughs> yeah. So, so I don't know what's going on here, but he's missed two straight practices with a quote-unquote illness. Mm-hmm. That goes out. That's the play when you plug in this fool, McLaurin, 
Because that's what's, that's what's holding McLaurin back because for whatever reason, Wentz just loves himself some Curtis Samuel. So that'll be something to keep an eye on. And like I said, Harris is not really, you know, done. Higby for the first time did something. Kamara, I guess he'll be back. I mean, they better be since they traded away Murray. And I mean, Mark Ingram didn't really do jack squat. So Gronky Kong is in a position where he could be beat, but he always likes to make some surprise moves. I wonder if he's going to keep the Minnesota kicker in defense. Oh, is that just a London thing? Um, Oil of Olave worked out decently. We'll have to see if Jameis comes back. He's no Njoku. After that fumble, he was in the doghouse. And I'm not going to make the mistake of benching either Hilaire or Sam. They, they, these guys are going to be in there. Enough of this musical bunglers at running back. Unless there's an injury, those two idiots are staying in there for the rest of the way. Uh, so you're not, but you're not going to go with Ramondre Stevens, and everybody seems to think that he's going to have a really and, good week this this week. It, it's it's a it's a fifty fifty with Harris. Once Harris goes down, then you go after Stevenson. Um, you could match him in that game. I mean, like, I mean, it depends on what you. You're, you're, you're thinking, I mean, but also, I mean, if Keenan Allen is out, you just move Olave up, up to the uh, uh, to the wide receiver one and then play Stevenson. It, it's if the if if a, if um if Samuel is out, then I might give McLaurin a spin because they're playing Tennessee. I, mean, I don't know how Tennessee is against the pass. I'll have to like maybe look into that. But I mean, McLaurin got 3.5 points against Dallas, but they were under siege the whole time. I'm just. Uh, I, I would be playing Stevenson this week. I'm it's not- almost rid of the Jets players. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm back Wilson back. Um, this this Jets. A lot of these Jets players are expendable. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean that's pretty much it. I mean this is going to be a we don't we don't have a a kicker in there. A kicker probably adds like five points or something. Like Rocky Kong's favorite to win. Um. I have Hilaire on Monday night, so he's got nothing. Is this game? 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. He's got the Sunday night game, and then he's going to be done. So we'll have we'll have one player going on Monday if things get ugly. But, um, yeah, I'm picking myself to win in this one. Are you? Um, I think I will, too, only because I think Harris is weak, and I think that Kamara is weak, especially with Kamara having the Seattle matchup. And I think that's boosting up his projections. Um, we'll see about Allen. Um, and I, you know, um, we'll, see, we'll, we'll see what, I mean, I look, I think Singletary and Hilaire are, are, are the appropriate players to play there. I, you know, McLaurin, I mean, what has McLaurin done all season? He hasn't done shit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 13, 12, 16, 3.5. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I think that that decision, that, that flex decision is actually going to be what this game hinges on either that or, you know. Or are you going to just face a Lamar Jackson game where whatever, you know, like then there's just nothing. You can do. It comes down to one of those two things, you know. Um, but um, I guess I'll pick you. Sure, why not? I, I just because I think Harrison and Kamara are, are not very good. But Lamar makes up for it. So if Lamar doesn't make up for it, then I'll, I'll do that. All right. Are you still there? Why is your face disappeared? Okay. Um, all uh, right. So that's to well, we have the fan and then we have there's one more game left. I tra- well, we have the lightning rods trash pandas. Right. Going- lightning rods trans pandas. Okay. So this game has already been underway as well. So 24.20 to zero right now, as they had uh, as the as the lightning rods had uh, two players play, Melvin Gordon with 13.3 and 10.9 from Pittman. Uh, in the Thursday night game, the original projection was 131.38 to 121.02. It, it right now it only dropped 128.81 to 121.02. Is the, the the pandas have nobody that have gone yet? Um, so you have Aaron Rodgers versus the Giants in London going against Stafford versus Dallas. I mean, I, I mean, okay. You said we'd look at this lineup. Now he still has a quarterback problem. Obviously, I mean, is is uh, Dak coming back this week, or did they rule him out yet? Um, isn't fully ready to participate. So Dak is not back. So which means he still has to. So staff. I mean, Stafford has been not good. Yeah, ironic. And at one point, he had Trevor Lawrence. He did. Um, just ironic that now he has Kirk, which could be the two person he got rid. Of. Yeah. 
Um, so the contact situation is is the same as before. Car, I mean, you plug in car, you plug in stat. It's the same thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, yeah, he's still struggling at quarterback. Um, at wide receiver, I mean, Jefferson should have a good game, I would think. I mean, I mean, he only had one bad week, I, if I recall, right? Um, yeah, he, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, you could say the ten, but still, I mean, like, I mean, the other the other games have been ridiculous. Um, and then he gets Kirk, who also has only had one really bad week. Um, and, and even that is not that bad of a week. It's just single digits, and he's going against Houston. So I think that his two receivers are gonna, you know, they're gonna have a fantastic game. But then you got Stefan Diggs uh, versus Pittsburgh, who's also been really good, and then Mike Williams. So, so he had a really good game. And then also it depends on um so you said Keenan Allen is most likely not gonna play. Yeah, so Williams is usually the beneficiary when Keenan Allen is out. Yeah, so I mean these are good matchups at, 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 at wide receiver. Um, you know, there's certainly the advantage um, from the lightning rods at quarterback. Damian Pierce. Damian Pierce guy has really come on strong. He has. Uh, he started out slow the first two games, but then ever since then he's been really good. Uh, going against Aaron Jones versus the Giants. Um, you know, and Aaron Jones, other than the one game, which was against uh, Tampa Bay, which is a really good run defense, uh, has been solid. And I don't um, – I mean, the Giants, uh, they played uh, the Bears last week, and they did pretty – they did decently against uh, Herbert. I mean, you know, but then also it's the London game, so you never know. And I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see how this goes. Um, but I think it's a decent situation. But he still has to go with Gibson for for the second running back, which nine points. I mean, you know, I think we're looking at a similar figure to, to Gordon there. Um, Lockett, I mean, he's been pretty good lately. Um, they're going against New Orleans, who's not very good. I mean, you know, and then you got Hawkinson against Kittle. Kittle's still been really disappointing, like even with with uh, uh, with Garoppolo back. So, I think that there's definitely an advantage there for Hawkinson, though. Like I said, I don't think the game might be as high scoring as anticipated because New England, but. I don't know. Um, I got to, you know, I'm going to give the edge to the lightning rods. I think that the, you know, Aaron Rodgers, I think Hawkinson, I think those two players are going to be what makes the difference in this game. And, you know, and and on the other side, Kittle and Stafford, I think those are the two weaker parts. They're going to make it weaker over there. Uh, That will allow lightning rods to edge around. Yeah. Defense is very stout, actually. So Pierce may not have as much um, as he as he really could. I think Williams is going to do decent against Cleveland, and Stefan Diggs against Pittsburgh is going to be solid. I swear, Buffalo is going to be pissed off after that horrific performance against Baltimore, so they're going to be swinging it around. Aaron Rodgers against the Giants. I'm not really sure about the Giants' defense. Um, I'm not too sure about them either. Well, so last week they played. I mean, so they played, but I mean, you know, they played the Bears with Justin Fields, who sucks. So, what is it? The Giants have the tenth fewest points given up against quarterbacks. I mean, they have a young team that runs around. So, that giant defense might be better than you think. And Green Bay doesn't really have a lot of weapons. Period. Um, I, I, I Hawkinson's going to play. I like Pierce. Even though he's got a tough matchup, I like Hawkinson a lot. I mean, he's just – he's ridiculous right now. I mean, it, he had a one good game. I mean, let's not go overboard. I mean, he had, what, 10, 5, and 7 prior to that game, but maybe 39 points is going to be like, you know, he's, he's not going to – He's the only one who's not injured on that team. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to get the ball. So, well, that also means that, you know, Bill Belichick is not going to exactly let him just roam free. So, I mean, it'll be interesting to see what what Hawkins does. It'll be interesting to see how this line up. I mean, it's not complete, obviously. I think Swift is Swift definitely out. Mm. Shoulder likely to be out against week five. Okay, so he's not going to have the services of Swift. Mm. Uh, Acres, I think the Acres experiment is over. Don't be surprised if he drops Acres. And and then he's got Algiers. Oh, meal of Acres and Henderson can just be dropped i think algiers was a was a you know a a junk bond package up deal which he tried to deliver to the um 
to the Haglers, but they didn't go for it. I think he's going to be gone. I think Moore might be gone. I think I think he's going to free up a lot of roster room after this week. Um, Kittle, Kittle, like I said, I don't know if Kittle's going anywhere. I I like the lightning rods slightly edging out the Whalers. All of his pieces are not in place right now. Yet. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Like I feel like he's he's close. He still doesn't have that quarterback, and I think that Kittle's going to hold him back. But other than that, he's starting to put it together. Like I said, mm-hmm. I think next next week he snags the quarterback he wants. Yeah, I mean, he's yeah, exactly. He's Rasputin. He is Rasputin. Don't be surprised if he slides to one and four, but I think that's where the slide ends. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'll take lightning rods and a slight edge. Slight edge. All right, let's move on to the fan uh, for the last and- game. What's that? Fan could be in trouble this week. I mean, he's playing the fan. <laughs> of course he is. This is a big time game, three and one versus four and zero. Oh, this could be for first place. Mm-hmm. And he's like, and and where where did we say that they are in points and point totals? Um, so, um, Anne is number one still, I think. So five thirty, and then Manny is four eighty. It's almost uh, that's a lot of points differential. Twenty plus thirty, it's about fifty. It's about a fifty point advantage that that he has. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, like we've seen in these games, I mean, you know, it's really been just you know the winner. I, like literally last week, every game, the winner had over a hundred, the loser had you know something, and, and and Eugene only had a um one seventeen last week. So I don't know. Um, but all right. So the initial projection, the original projection was one thirty point three zero to one twenty five point five two. Uh, the current projection is 130.30 to 121.7, so slight drop off for Sutton um, from his projection, but you know, pretty close to it. Nothing to whatever. So, um, yeah, you got Burrow going Sunday night against uh, uh, Herbert uh, at Cleveland. You got a West Coast team going East, um, so he's playing Herbert instead of Fields this time. What did Fields do last week? Was he? Or sorry, not Fields. What was Fields hurts? Only 15, but other than that, he's been a monster. So I play Hurts here. Come on. Against Arizona, that's going to be a shootout. I mean, I guess he thinks that Herbert's going to have a shootout against Cleveland, but I mean, like, I mean, they're going east. They're going to play early morning. You know, the, those those West Coast teams traveling east, I just don't think. I I think I would play um um Hurts here. I would definitely play Hurts. You, you know, Hurts has got the hot hand. You don't sit him until he cools off considerably. I mean, he cooled off last week theoretically. He only got fifteen. But Arizona great defense. No, I know. I, I would definitely be playing Hurts here. Um, okay. Yeah, I get it. Go away. Okay. Um, Burrow. He's trying to pick it up, and he's going against. Oh, he's going against Baltimore. Baltimore kids it off like it's nobody's business. Um, I mean, they didn't last week because the monsoon, but still, that was even even that was a high scoring game. I think Burrow is going to do well here too. I actually, so it depends if if Hertz plays against Burrow, um, but I'm going to give a slight edge to Burrow in this game uh, over Herbert. I don't, you know, I'm not saying he's going to have a bad game. I just think the better play is is clearly uh, Hertz. Um, so can Gabe Davis do anything? Um, he has done nothing lately after that first game, right? Am I correct? Oh, he did the wrong. I mean, he sat out one, six, and two. I don't know. I would not, I don't feel that confident about Davis here. I mean, I don't even know if he could match Sutton's numbers. Uh, Davis Schuster combo meal, not looking that great. Really does not, especially against AJ Brown. It's been, you know, like a month. Or, uh, yeah, that, that's so. Even if I'm going to give a slight edge to Burrow here, I gotta give the wide receiver edge heavily in favor of Davis for Crush. Um, and then you got Barkley, who I mean, they don't even have a quarterback, so, it's, so I mean, he might even be the quarterback. Who knows? <laughs> uh, I mean, Barkley. Uh, Hall has also been, I mean, so he's questionable knee limited in practice, but I mean, look at his numbers. I mean, even with Zach Wilson coming back, he, he did, he basically kept uh, a pace to where he was. Um, Henry has gotten, you know, better. I think he has a very weak opponent. I think that, you know, can go well for him. And then Sanders against Arizona. 
I think that that's a decent, you know, I, I think the running back matchups are, are fine here. You got Kelsey going against Pitts. I think Kelsey, uh, you know, especially against Kelsey against the Raiders on Monday night, <laughs> going against Pitts, who's been a tremendous disappointment um, and might even be injured. I don't even know what's going on there. Um, oh, there's that hamstring, the dreaded hamstring. But yeah, he's got the, he's done. So. Um, then you got Brandon Cooks going against um, at, you know, at Jacksonville and Jacksonville, they just had the the, the good game yeah. last week. Look at Jamal Williams's numbers. I mean, twenty four point seven and twenty three point nine, amazing. But he's going up against the the Patriots are a tough tough team. Yeah, but we'll see. I mean, this, this is a really good game. I um, because there's like there's like holes in both of these lineups that 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 I don't know. It's interesting. So yeah, I give the quarterback advantage to Manny. I, I I give the wide receiver heavily to to Eugene. I think that the running back matchups are kind of a wash. Maybe slightly in favor of Eugene, but kind of a wash. Give the tight end obviously heavily in favor uh, to Manny. And I'm gonna give I'm, I'm gonna give the the, the flex uh, in favor of Manny as well. Um. Because I think Jacksonville's a tough, tough matchup. I mean, not that New England's not. I don't know. This, this is this one's a tough one to call. I mean, Manny is the favorite, but I. Just... Oof, this one's a really tough call. I mean, Tennessee versus Washington—that's a great defensive matchup. But Philly against Arizona is going to. Ugh. You know what I mean? I... You know, there's a lot. Of... <laughs> Stacks and fumbles and interceptions and stuff. So, yeah, the scoring is going to be high. If Manny could do something about his wide receivers, I'm going to pick Manny in this one. But wide receivers might lose it for him. I would say that, but we already see that that Sutton only has 12.4. You know, like, I mean, A.J. Brown will have a great game, but, I mean, how great a game is he going to have? And yeah, Manny's receivers are cra- – but I mean, Eugene doesn't have a tight. Does he have a? Does he have a backup tight end? He's got Everett. Who were they going against? Dallas or Cleveland? Mm. I mean, go for I, so I, close. It's it is close, and with Eugene only getting twelve point four from Sutton, I'm going to go with Manny edging him out. I'm going to go with Eugene edging him out only because I think that Manny's wide receivers are weaker. I mean, it really depends on what happens with the tight ends. Oh, it's it's going to be close. I'm going to go just bear. I, I'm I'm not ready to, to, to go against the fan yet. <laughs> I'm going to go on out of the ledge. I say the fan slightly gets edged out by Manny this week for his first loss. I, I think the fan – slightly edges out Manny to, to continue rolling. But I, I, I could see it going the other way. I think this is going to be the, the, his uh, toughest match so far. All right. Yeah. So uh, you will you will be the one who either has to write a uh, thousand page apology next week or not. Uh, I at least uh, escaped that because I picked him. <laughs> the only yeah. thing I get to avoid being that uh, my team looks to be in dire straits after our <laughs> Thursday night game. Never never count on a Thursday night game, but yeah, uh, we're looking pretty bad right now. Um, all right, so obviously the lock of the week is Clever Name Pending versus Wakanda. <laughs> Easily. Um, what is my upset of the week? Um... I'm going to take me versus Gronky Kong. Okay. I'm going to take um, Tillet Trey over Zamunda. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Mm. I think those scores that Tillet gets, I think Zamunda has enough firepower to, to win it this week. I th- he might. He might. But uh, I'm just – the spider's web is just so- – I think – Here's my bold prediction of the week. Both undefeated teams go down this week. Interesting. Okay. That's uh that's interesting. 
bold prediction of the week. My 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 opposite prediction is that uh, I'm actually picking both um, undefeated teams to continue undefeated. So, Whoa. all right, that, that's that's the bold bold predictions of the week. Yeah. So we're actually at the opposite end. So the fan who always says just says, "Oh, you you, you know, you're always going yes." Or what, what, what was he saying? You just say, uh-huh, I, yeah, you just agree. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Actually, we're going against each other this time. Get me uppity. I know. <laughs> Look at this. You know. And you're going against him. He's, you're going to face his eye this week. All right. Um, yeah. Um, good luck to everybody this week. Yep, good luck, everyone. This should be an exciting week. Yep. All right. Uh, until next time see ya peace out